Death, taxes, and trip winning Yu Gi Oh tournaments. Three things that'll never change, baby. Let's go. I would say that I'm back, but wait, this just it. I never left. I am today going to showcase you guys my Sky Striker, Reed Smith, Azamina, Snake Eye deck. That just, it doesn't lose. It doesn't lose. I don't know why. I do know why. It's because I built it. So this video is going to show you guys how to play this deck, the deck profile. I'm like 15 and 0 with this in real life. That's why he's the GOAT! And I'm going to go take it to another locals right now. This is yesterday's first place victory. I'm going to show you guys. So without further ado, I'm gonna show you guys, but first I'd like the comments to compliment me on my beard. No reason other than I just like it. I just like it. That's it. I have a cool beard. I like it. So if you guys stay tuned until around the third minute of this video, I'm gonna show you guys the beard oil I use. Uh, just kidding. I'll tell you guys now. I use my opponent's tears and I put it all on with my beard as they see my seven negate board. That's right. Seven negate board with a sky striker, etc. deck. I'm gonna show you guys how this works right now. Before we do, I wanna give a big shout out right now to the Team Samurai X1. As you guys know, I'm in the studio, which is now my studio! Doom Light will be returning soon, but in the meantime, all our videos will be shot from here from now on. So let's give a shout out to Sam in the comments. And wait one second. You're looking at the new member of Team Supreme Pro! Let's go! I'll be joining Sam and Pack to victory! As I'm gonna join both of them with a YCS win when I win YCS Anaheim. So give a big shout out to Supreme Pro. Use Triff10. Hengon? That's pretty cool. Use code Triff10 down below to get 10% off everything on Supreme Pro. Sean LB down below. Use it right now. TSXO.com and down below to get your amazing sleeves. Which, by the way, they are amazing. I use them all the time. So, with that being said, in the big team, new team reveal, shout out Supreme Pro. Drag. And as you guys know, my old team was Team Inspire, which I'm no longer on. I like them. But what if you be having a grudge match? Team Supreme Pro versus Team Inspire. Oh, you guys have a world champion? Oh, yeah? We have a universe champion. Yeah. So we are a challenge, you guys. Anyway, let's get straight to this. Time to begin the video. Before we get into it, I would like to apologize to everyone that has purchased the Fire deck box. It has took so long to get sent over. So I'm actually just going to be sending a refund to absolutely everybody. Uh, I apologize to everyone. If you'd still like the deck box, just reach out to me. It's been so long and there's been such complications when it got delivered over. It was absurd. I'm never working with them again. Uh, but I'd like to apologize to everyone. I'm going to be sending a full refund to everybody. Privately message me if you guys would still like it. Anyways, let's go straight into the video. The main point of the deck is to resolve this card right here. Now, the reason why Engage is so powerful in this deck is every engine... Snake Eye Ash, Fiend Smith, Bonfire, other cards I'm gonna show you don't know yet, Diabell Star Wanted, everything, they all get spell cards. Deception gets two, Snake Eyes get two, they all get two. Every single card gets some form of spell. And other spells search other spells, and with combination of cards like Thrust, which you main deck, you're basically playing six copies of Engage going second, which makes it almost impossible to lose because you're drawing with this card every single time. So we built the whole deck around it. The three cards with Engage that we play as well is one of each of these, which also, by the way, are very powerful because even just one Hornet equals summon two monsters without normal summoning. And I don't know if you guys know this, but this is a fire format. Even next format with Ryzeal, I'm gonna show you a combo with this card, which I might play this next format and clap everybody. But one Hornet makes Kagari, which is fire. This is dark. Guess what? You could take any, going second, you could take any single combo card in your deck. You could special Black Witch, get your whole combo off. You could special their Poplar, get your whole combo off. So it doesn't matter. Like going second, this is the most broken. The fact that you guys did not play this for the last six months that I retired, semi retired, just kidding, I'll never retire. But if, if you get, uh, we're not playing the last six months. You guys didn't play this because they're crazy. And these two, this literally just steals. It does the same thing the Charmers do going second. It steals their Black Witch. It steals their Snake Eye cards. You're able to play going second. And Widow Anchor obviously is amazing. So it's like, bro, you guys are, are cracked to not play this engine. It's so broken in anything. It's too bad. Even in Ryzeal format, this is crazy. Because when Ryzeal comes out, you're actually going to shark. Here, look at this. This is even better in, in Ryzeal format because Widow Anchor will stop single-handedly. Right, Widow Anchor will stop their whole board. Goodbye, Dreadnator, you suck. And guess what? When it's in the graveyard, hey, I'll just take your Dreadnator now. 
detonator of practical trigger, attaching a monster from your own graveyard, and it has an interruption. Let's go, baby! That's what I'm talking about. That's what we play. And then, I'm gonna show you guys now the snake eye part of the deck, which is one ash, one poplar, one oak, one birch, one Kurikara! Do you guys know what this card does? You guys are so cracked. How do you guys, like Yu-Gi-Oh as a whole, it, it just, it's not there uh, genius-wise as I am. I, I operate on levels ahead. For anyone who would not play this card in Snake Eye, even with hand traps, you guys are just absurd. This card clears everything in the meta so easily. You can bait your opponent into using all of their cards, and then you just obliterate their ass. And next format, when Detonator uses one interruption, you get rid of their Detonator, and then you steal it on the end phase, triggering its effect to get a material. This card is insane, and it's free. It's in engine that you search with uh, with uh, Ash, and you can get it so easily, it's absurd. Or recycle it with Oak, get it for free off your uh, spells. And I know you're gonna say, oh, but true, Bonfire doesn't search it, right? Well, here's what you, oh, before I get into that, Birch comes up a lot too. Because for one, you don't have many Snake Eye cards left for Bonfire. So this is acts as an extra extender. Extenders are vital. One monster is a difference of OTK. I'm gonna show you guys combos in my extra deck, which makes it so you OTK so easily, it's absurd. So to have one extra monster is the game changing of win or lose. And now I'll tell you why this is insane. Bonfire will always go for Poplar, no matter what. This is like your be all end all play, but Bonfire trying to search nothing else. Hence, you want your Snake Eye Ash to not search for Poplar. That's why you want it to search Birch or Kurikara, depending on what it is. And then with the, with the Striker cards, to make the Striker cards uh, be able to be interruptions going uh, when you're going first, you need Birch for that. Where you're able to do very cool plays by your, your Azamina tribute to itself gets off field, you use your SP to get itself off field, use your Birch to get rid of something, and then you uh, chain these. So it does come up actually quite a lot. And now, here's the MVP of the deck! You've heard of Bonfire, right? Everyone thinks Bonfire is a broken card, don't make fun of me for mixed match rarities. Well, what about Bonfire 2.0? Bonfire was so awesome, we made another! Hello, where art thou? Now, the reason why where art thou in this deck is so damn amazing. Hey, I wonder what Engage does. I don't know, it needs spells, right? No, it also gets Hornet Drones. What level is Hornet Drones? Level one. So you're able to have so many level ones. Wait a sec, what else is level one? I don't know, your entire deck? Uh, Beats with Engraver Effect? Special Lurie? Lurie's level one? Let's go! You're getting popular every single game. You guys are so lucky to play last format. I would have clapped every single one of you. I'm the best player to ever play this game. Don't forget it. I'm winning YCS Santa Hive. Playing over YCS champ, baby. All I need is one YCS to prove that. Let's go. Now, where are that acts as different reasons as well. It not only acts as Poplar Turbo, where you go for Poplar, obviously, but you're able to then, surprise, motherfucker, Curry Card, Demon Carnate. Nice board. So you're able to act as where are thou is the most absurd card to get your Poplar. They can get your normal summon, if, like, let's say you just open Engraver and Where Art Thou, or Engage Where Art Thou. You put your, the Hornet Drones or Lurian Field, you can use this. Typically, the deck does not have many normal summons. You get your Snake Eye Ash. You play full combo. Or, let's say you did all that. You did all the Snake Eye stuff already. You did your Engraver. You can search, you could search your Lurie if you start off with Bonfire Special Poplar, or you start with Witch, get Poplar, Where Art Thou, you need, we want. Your, let's say your Requiem got Ash, you could search Lurie. Hold on, it gets even better here. Ready? Why else do you play the Birch? It's extender.deck. Everything. You use your popular, you use all these. Special summon. Wait a sec. What about another level one that special summon itself that gets absurd value? Because hey, Fiendsmith puts free equip spells for nothing. Am I right? Fiendsmith puts free equip spells for nothing. Am I right? Deception stays on field for nothing sometimes. Am I right? You get all these snake eye cards in, in the spell zone for nothing, right? How on earth is it going to be a trip deck without Magician Souls? Then you're actually playing four Magician Souls. You're playing four Magician Souls. And seeing as how you go to Dark every single time going second, a play many times Dark, special a card, enter battle phase, search Souls, draw two, so draw engage. See you later, bozo. This deck's insane. You guys are lucky I didn't play last format. Cool play as well. You're no longer playing, uh, what's the best card in the deck? Maybe the Azaminas are so good, right? Let's say you have all this stuff, but no Azamina. You want a bridge to the Azamina? You want a bridge to get to the full Azamina engine? You have these four. You have these five, six. Souls will send the Black Witch. And then, what's a trip deck without Pen Best deck, am I right? Selene, special the Black Witch out from the grave. There's, and guess what? Guess what? Oh, you can't make Selene? You play two Charmers. 
you get these any day of the week. Any day of the week, add them as a spellcaster. So if you don't have a spellcaster, you can just add them up for no reason. Celine, add them on uh, any link too. Celine special this, you win. So with these and the wanted, so I'm gonna go right into this part now. You're actually playing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine ways to Black Witch, but you're only playing two Black Witch. It's like all these cards are extenders. Like, like any combination of these are so broken and they clear almost any board with the extra deck. And then of course, we can't forget one of each of these, which is all combo as well. Then we have the Fawn Bridge and Snake Eye Devil Star, which uh, are good. And then I play two Deception, one Hollow Desert Mina. Uh, two Deception here, I'm just proxying this. I, I was borrowing my friends. You only need two. I don't play one for one because you don't play hand traps, you play board breakers. There's no board this deck cannot obliterate. The next format, Rise is really good, yeah. But you have like 20 cards to one out the entire board, right? This has a fantastic Ryzeal matchup. It cannot lose the Ryzeal, seriously. I'm, I'm dueling book, I'm 6-0 right now against my buddy who is, okay, he's pretty ass, but I whooped his ass, 6-0, let's go. Next, the Fiendsmith cards. You got the two engraver, I put one engraver back here. Like it's all sauce, so all these cards are amazing when first or second. You got this, you got this, you got this. And then you got the Lori, which I put in here as well. And now you look at a deck like this, like, okay, Trip, all you've been so much showing so far is sauce, right? How do you go second? How do you go second? Have you guys read these cards? Forget going, like, going, you're going second. You have one of these in your hand. Have you read with these cards? You're telling me a, a fact Baylor can do more than one of these? Any of these one cards alone can out an entire deck, an entire board going second. You name it. My opponent made me go first. I'm playing Loser Tempai. Oh my god, I got more Charming and, and D-Shifter in the drop phase? Okay, I'll activate my thrust. And I'll set my D barrier! Do you think I'm gonna lose to this to that deck? No! Never! And now let's say you're going second against a combo deck. Let's say Fire King Snake Eyes put out eight negates. Cool. Nice story, bro. This is what your 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 board breakers are. You're only playing six. Well, I guess you're playing this as a brick, uh, but it's fine because you need cards to discard anyways, so it's fine. These are the board breakers you play before side decking. Because post side deck, all of you see have way more. You have these seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So you're playing these 12 board breakers, right? Now here's where it gets very cool. These are your 12 defensive cards. This is where it gets really crazy. It's not 12. It's actually 15. Where art thou is searching for the, the least expected career card you've incarnate. Now it's gonna get even better. Well, you have, you're playing a 43 card deck, you have 15 like auto win cards basically. Not auto win, but like they, they try, you draw one curry card against a board this format, or one talent, one thrust, one engage, you're winning. What about all the draw cards? What about every card in your deck that gets to uh, Snake Eye Ash, which gets to Kurikara, which like, like what about all those cards? What about all of these cards? Because they all get to Kurikara. So you're playing like, what about a free Charmer for nothing that outs the whole board for free with one card, uh, forcing an interruption if they have a negate, they're gonna, let's say you have evenly matched, they're gonna negate it, right? All right, well, if I have a dark charmer, they're gonna negate that too. All these cards warrant an instant one card auto negate. An instant negate. Are you gonna let me resolve my, uh, to summon Desiree? You're not gonna let me resolve my link too. You're not gonna let me resolve an engraver. Engraver effect to guard of a card in the field. You're not letting any of these cards resolve. What I'm trying to get at is all these cards warrant an instant negate. You're gonna let me get Flambridge out on the field with this? Instant, instant, instant negate. That's a lot of cards. Not to mention the poplar as well. Like these are, like this warrants an instant negate. All of these cards warrant instant negating. That's your entire deck, dude. That's your entire deck. You cannot lose going second. Okay. I hope you guys understand how broken this deck is. I would love, I can't wait to show you guys duels with it. I'm gonna be playing against Ryzeal with this deck and obliterating them. It's actually an amazing call, meta call next format because while everyone's playing D barrier, and you're laughing at them because D-Barrier doesn't do shit to you at this deck, you don't care. Oh, I can't summon my Azamina. I don't care, I'm gonna end on a bunch of negates anyways. So it doesn't matter, actually. So, extra deck now. This, ready? I, anyone that removes Selene access code in a Black Witch deck might be legitimately high. You must be absurdly stupid. No offense to, uh, yes offense, actually. To, you're playing, what? I'm playing, what, 10 ways to spellcasters, 11? This means, that any two monsters in my entire deck, they can't stop Charmers. What are they gonna do? Negate and destroy a Charmer? Search Souls, search Poplar. Selene, summon back Souls to draw. Summon back Black Witch to get an effect and win. Pop two cards minimum. If it's Hida, it's pop three. Anima bridges with everything here. So you're able to make any of these anytime you want. Next, you play, it actually like so tight. The, I don't play Caesar. I don't play Necroquip, just these four. Necroquip and Aerial Eater are for Fiend decks. 
if, if you use Necro Equip instead of Lacrima, then you're not actually able to uh, resolve Desiree with Necro Equip. So uh, Necro Equip is extremely redundant in my opinion. You're not actually able to resolve Desiree, resolving the effect of Engraver and uh, using the Necro Equip uh, to summon a sequence that way. So Necro Equip does nothing unless you're trying to go for Caesar. If you're playing Caesar, then I, you'll need a Necro Equip. I don't need any of those. They, they, all they are are two slots on my extra deck I'll never use. These are nine cards so far. The obvious Kagari. Let's go. Uh, long live my beloved. Uh, Skystriker Ace Kagari. And then SP and IP and Princess. As you see so far, you cannot remove anything in this deck so far. And that's 13 uh, Azamina cards. I was borrowing the, the good Azamina from my friend. Which, by the way, the good Azamina, not the negate, is way better than this card. So, what this card is, because I'm sure, like, this is a 2000 attack, 2400 defense. Azamina monster that adds a simple spoils or Azamina card. This is what you do many, uh, some, not many times, but sometimes going second. Going second, by the way, you summon Azamina, you search, you find some way, like keep it on the field for now, find some way to put dark on the field, try to get like get your opponent to imperm, whatever, waste some cards, literally just crash with both. This will resolve again. You can resolve this twice. You can add on the field and in, when it gets destroyed by battle or effect. And then dark adds a card. So the cards that you use to summon these cards, replenish themselves your opponent wasted a bunch of cards and you have three cards on your hand for free but with the other four cards you would so you start your turn now with seven or eight and then you you add back to hollow as amina so you actually have eight or nine just like that well, that's 15 card extra deck side deck we put three droplet three evenly one duster so v7 you put in a lot going second i don't main deck the droplet because going second you're already playing as you saw infinity go second cards i want as many of my cards to be live going first this deck has no problems breaking board with zero board breakers it obliterates boards for breakfast but i still side the droplet to make sure evenly resolves and going second when you have these six combined with three thrust three talents three engage like i can't explain how, how easy it is to break boards what I do for siding many times is I remove every Fiendsmith card except for one engraver because the whole engraver package I would prefer to get for free via my uh, Moon of the Close Heaven. So you don't need any more. So I'd actually remove two engraver, a Lacrima, and a Tract and a Lurie. That's five cards. So typically, if I'm trying to go for the evenly strategy, that's five. And I'll remove a Wear of Thou because it's tough to get. It's easy, but it's a little tougher second than first to have level ones in the field if you're siding so many cards like this. Like there's no engraver. So Wear of Thou loses its value without Lurie on the field. So I'll put this. And if I think they could play, Duster is very good almost against any, every deck going second because they'll set their Imperm. They'll set cards they might have sided. Called by the Grave, the cross outs because I don't play hand traps. So Duster just comes up a lot. They'll set their impulse sometimes. Generic cards, Skyburn, whatever cards they might have post sided as well. Skill Drain. So to have this as well is good. And, and if I put both of these in, I'll remove two Wear of Dows. That's a siding pattern for going second. And the beauty of this deck, by playing Board Breakers, every, every deck, evenly Droplet, Talents, Thrust, and Gage, are broken against literally every single deck in the game. So this now allows for eight cards in the side deck to be for going first. You guys see now how broken this deck is? You're telling me an evenly match, getting rid of seven cards does more, does less than effect Valor? Bro, you guys are not operating on logic here. Next, because a lot of people are playing Tempi and you don't want to lose to glue eaters that don't know what a main phase or main phase two is, that don't even know, if you ask them what's a standby phase, they say, I don't stand, I just sit on my couch and do nothing. That's why you play many D barriers. I tried to fit more trap tricks, but I couldn't. You already main deck the 1D barrier with three thrust. They're obviously going to resolve hand traps on your turn because they have 24 defensive slots. So when they do, you, you have actually have seven D barriers. So when they let you go first, you clap them. And you have talents to look at their hand, get rid of their, they're their, probably their one starter. Then I have uh, one to room in. It's for thrust, just in case. And then this the last card I'm proxying, I promise, is the sinful spoils trap card that acts as a negate. So I always side this going first every single game because you could get it for free. So you actually end on three negates. The board typically ends on three negates of the Simple Spoils Trap, which you'll always get going first post side deck. You, so Simple Spoils Trap, that's a free negate. You get a free dive all-star always. You end on the Azamina negate and the Desiree negate. So you have three negates it, combined with Masquerina, Flamberge, uh, SP, Princess, uh, random defensive cards, potential D barriers, the talents, thrust, like absurd. And I also play one anti spell, one skill drain. Obviously, amazing. I one called by the grave for Molcharmies. The play against Molcharmie is depends on my hand, but I'll let them draw a good amount sometimes. Like, I'll let them draw three, probably. 
if I could. I don't go full combo. Sometimes I let them draw one. Ending on Mascarena with some defensive cards and uh, like SP is fine. It all depends on the scenario and what I have. That's why I play Thrust and Talents, where if they follow me, I'm able to look at their hand, get rid of the extender. I'm able to dig for the D barriers or the skill drains or the anti spell or, or the Ruma. So, so it all depends on the hand. But that's a pretty good Moltrami matchup without, even without hand traps because of the Thrust and Talents. Video extremely in depth for you guys. I went very, 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 very in depth with every matchup, how to play the deck properly, how to win. The end board is absolutely broken. Obviously, I built it. It is typically the negate, the Azamina negate. It is Desiree. It is my IP Mascarena. It is Flamberg, crazy follow up. Four cards in hand. Princess and Grave. That's five. That's the like guaranteed one. I end up having so much free slots. I could do more. You could play the Angel statue with uh, Silhouette Rabbit, but this format it's not good at all whatsoever because most cards that summon this format are by effect. Next format in Rhyseal format, very, the Angel Statue is very, very good because it stops the rank for its summon. So next format, I'm side decking, I'm probably even main decking the Angel Statue because so many times with this deck, you have free fodder. Because you're playing so many cards that summon themselves going first, you, you have like two cards that, that just sit there that do nothing. So you could make that an extra interruption. You 100% can. Uh, debating playing one, I would love to try to fit one Unicorn in the extra deck so I can end on SP and IP go into Unicorn uh, because I won't expect it. But there's really no space. I like to fit an Azalea in there as well for the Sky Strikers and also for IP, but there's no space whatsoever. So the only card you could cut is Anima, but too many times it'll come up that you need to free up your slot for Engage, so you do need it. And it bridges to all, it makes all your deck go into any Charmer you want and Selene. But that's the deck, guys. Uh, absolutely broken. A bit even better next format because it's an incredible Rise Hill matchup. Hope you guys like the video. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. Shout out to Supreme Pro. And uh, I'm going to win YCS Anaheim. Bye.